section, we're going to talk to a few students from the upper division about their discipline choices and their experience in each discipline. At Dalhousie, we have six disciplines, and uh, we're going to start with Amir from Electrical, then we're going to go to Tala from Industrial, Annie from Environmental. For Chemical, we have Devon. Uh, Civil, we have Farage, and Hannah is going to be talking about Mechanical today, and then we'll have a few questions at the end. If you want to go ahead, Amir. Hi, folks. Uh, just a small introduction. My name is Amir. I'm a third slash fourth year electrical engineering student at Dalhousie University. Um, I've currently just finished three co-ops, uh, with my first one being with Irving Shipbuilding. Uh, worked on the AOPS project. Uh, second one being I worked in the telecommunication industry with Eastlink. And lastly, just uh, finishing up my co-op with Nova Scotia Power, uh, working in the dam safety management team. Um, so initially, when I went into first year, uh, I wanted to always go into mechanical. Um, I think mechanical is wonderful. However, after seeing all these beautiful uh, disciplines, um, I was able to kind of see why electrical, as much as other disciplines, are really, really important, and it really grabbed my eye. Um, it's something really magical about uh, electrical engineering, how things connect so smoothly, yet we can't really see the process of how everything happens. Um, and you kind of see that throughout the entire discipline from second year all the way to fifth year, um, whether you're talking about electromagnetic fields and how, you know, electrons, uh, you know, behave with specific materials or, you know, going through a design course during the summer with three other individuals working from a very small problem and, you know, working for four months and then eventually coming out with a really, really good product and a device. Um, if you take a look outside, everything that we have, the way we connect with other people has always been through electrical and computer engineering, um, whether it might be from softwares developed by engineers and uh, computer science, as well as you know machinery that you use, whether it is from your phone, from your laptop, and the internet. Um, and that just really grabbed my eye, and I think that is uh, one of the future of uh, you know the different disciplines in uh, in engineering, and that's the reason why I chose that discipline. It just really caught my eye. Um, so I will now give it uh, towards Tala. Hi everyone, um, we're here in industrial engineering and I am just finished my what's known as the hardest uh, semester in industrial engineering. And um, every single time I start with a semester, I always end up testing my brother at one point and saying, I love my discipline. And that's be just because like of everything we're learning and all the diversity that we have in our discipline. and I know it's known as like something like as an easier engineering discipline, but what we learn is actually far beyond what's easy. And we go into depth into everything that we've been trying to understand all these years. And I think it's amazing how all our courses are just interconnected with each other. Just just now, we just finished a simulations project and our project was to represent the London Underground. And as a person that's like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? We started off with no background whatsoever. And we got the trains, we got the passengers, we got it all working out from failures to maintenance to everything. And with through the course of our degree, you just observe how much you learn through this discipline and especially through our professors and our just our networks are very supportive. Everyone's supportive in our discipline so it's just amazing how everything works out to be smooth and we've learned so many things about real life and we've worked with the fire stations with firefighters we've developed applications for so many people we've worked with big data we've worked with private companies we've, we've worked with so many systems and processes that is you're gonna fall in love with this discipline every single day so, and that's what grabbed me into this discipline. I started off with saying, oh, I want it for the business side of it. But then every single semester, I'm amazed by all the new courses that I'm learning and the ability to just diverse my learning and just keep on learning new things every day. I know a bit of everything and everything about something. So I love that about my discipline. I'm going to move on to Annie. Uh, thanks, Tala. So hi everyone, I'm Annie and I just finished my third year of environmental engineering. Um, so first I wanted to start off with a little bit of advice that I had 
that I have from when I chose my discipline. So when I first got accepted into engineering at Dalhousie, I had every intention of going into environmental engineering. However, when it came to make that decision, I was faced with a difficulty that derived from my course load. And uh, looking back at that first year, I can conclude that I did not take any courses that directly related to my discipline of interest. So I had no knowledge of what environmental engineering was like, whether I would like the courses and whether I would succeed in them. Um, so I was not confident at the time in making that decision for my discipline. I thought at one point that maybe I should just pick uh, the discipline that was associated with my courses that I had gotten my highest marks in, and that would have been the wrong choice for me. Um, therefore, my biggest suggestion is um, to pick what you are most interested in. If environmental engineering sounds like a good choice for you, don't hesitate, just choose it. Um, another piece of advice I had if you are considering environmental engineering is to not let any of the courses that you take in first and second year bring you down. Um, I assure you when you begin taking environmental courses, especially for me, you'll feel more motivated to take them for sure. Okay, so now to the basics. If uh, biology and ecology are of interest to you, environmental engineering is a great choice. I would describe environmental engineering as a more specific subdiscipline of civil engineering. It is more specific in that it deals primarily with water and wastewater treatment, monitoring of contaminated sites, air quality modeling, and environmental risk assessments rather than some more structural topics that you would typically see in civil engineering. Um, most of the courses I took this past year direct uh, directly relate to those topics. If you are more interested in the specifics of each course, I would suggest that you read into them on the Dalhousie website and academic calendar. Um, as is expected with environmental engineers, there is a lot of report writing, so keep this in mind. If you do not like to write, then you may not be happy with your choice in environmental engineering. Um, report writing, however, leads to some fun opportunities. This year, we had a report due after a field trip we took to measure flow in the Sackville River. This was the first field trip I think I had taken since high school. Um, I also think the reason that we were able to go on this field trip is because of environmental engineering's small size. My environmental specific classes this year probably had about 30 to 40 people in them. And this was a great advantage as it allowed me to socialize with my peers better and my profs. In my first two years at Dal, I barely spoke to any of my profs. Um, now I know my profs by their first names. They know me and I feel comfortable asking them any questions I have. So um, also in terms of student societies, environmental engineering actually has its own society, which I will actually be the president of next year. Um, I was on it this year as a VP social, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, we redesigned the environmental engineering lounge in the end building, which is a great quiet place to study, and through a few socials. It was a great way to stay involved and get to know my peers better. Um, I would be happy to answer any more specific questions that you may have, if there is any. Um, in terms of jobs, environmental concerns are becoming more and more prominent and that's why I think environmental engineering is a great choice. It is unlikely that any project will be undertaken today without an environmental assessment performed by an environmental engineer. So there are lots of opportunities for environmental engineers ranging from research to working at consulting firms to be involved in the wastewater and water industries. I actually had the opportunity to work at a consulting firm this past summer and it was a great place to work because it introduced me to the most variety there is in environmental engineering work. Um, some co-op opportunities that I was aware of this year were at Environment Canada and in northern regions of Canada. As a result, as an environmental engineer, you'll be working outside a lot, I would say. So if you like to travel and be outdoors, environmental engineering is right for you. Um, that's it for me, and on to Devin. Hi, uh, thanks, Annie. Um, I just finished my final year of chemical engineering, which is um, when I was asked to talk, I actually looked at what the definition of chemical engineering is, didn't actually know. 
Um, so I'll start with that. Um, in broad terms, chemical engineers conceive and design processes to produce, transform, and transport materials um, at the be beginning with experimentation in the laboratory followed by the implementation of the technology in full-scale production. Um, so what chemical engineers do in general is we focus on the processes to take a raw material to its final product, beginning at the lab scale and then scaling it up so it can be uh, mass produced. Um, so personally, I've done four co-ops um, with my time at Dalhousie and I did all of them with Pepsi. Um, and I actually have a job with Pepsi now after school. So co-op program, if you're not sure about that, I would highly recommend it. Um, and and other industries that I know uh, friends have worked in is um, food and beverage, oil and gas, pulp and paper, pharmaceuticals, companies like Shell, Pepsi, Irving, and there's a lot of opportunities for chemical engineers. Um, I went into chemical engineering because I really like chemistry, which is a misconception. Chemical engineering is not as much chemistry as you would think. However, it bases most of its processes on the stoichiometry of a chemical reaction, just not as much the in-depth chemistry. So if you really, really are expecting a lot of chemistry, that's a, definitely a misconception that I was also uh, under. Um, but I would say in general, chemical engineering focuses on a lot on temperature, pressure, phase changes, and the properties of materials and how they would react and how they would uh, go through a process. So uh, that's mainly what chemical engineering is. Um, as for chemical engineering at Dalhousie, we uh, have a brand new building, which is really great. Um, all the profs are, all their offices are right there, really, really accessible, lots of study space. And it was really a great spot to be um, finishing up this degree. And um, Dalhousie is really great with the engineering program. You're on your own campus, which really has a sense of community with all the engineering students within your faculty and uh, discipline. So I'll pass that on to Faraj. Hi, everyone. My name is Faraj. I am also a fifth and final year engineering student at Dal. I officially just graduated and I'll be continuing on to uh, do my Master's of Applied Science here at Dalhousie as well for the next two years. So we'll see and I'm very excited for those next two years. So I do recommend anybody who wants to continue in their education, Dalhousie the great, has great programs available. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight into civil engineering, because I feel I am the epitome of civil engineering as I was the class rep in third year, the president of the Civil Engineering Society in the fourth and fifth years. So I really know how to represent and advocate on behalf of the civil engineering body. So in a nutshell, really, civil engineering is the practice of designing and developing infrastructure, whether it's developing our nationwide transportation systems, our water supply networks, skyscrapers, foundation systems, roads, our buildings, etc. So a civil engineer is responsible for all aspects of a structure comprising of the planning, the design, the budgeting, the construction management, which is very important, surveying and analysis. So there's a lot of um, ways for you to be involved as a civil engineer. So you could go into construction management, you can be a project manager, you can go strictly into the design, you're in the, in the office and you're a designer. There's a lot of versatility and I feel as civil engineers, we're very versatile and be able in, in order to solve a lot of the problems we have today. So civil engineering is a very rapidly advancing industry, hence I'm uh, involved in continuing my research here at Dow and it's constantly adapting to contemporary developments and concerns such as pollution, water shortages, and sustainable energy. Um, for example, myself, I'm gonna be going, I'll be more involved in sustainable infrastructure uh, as part of my thesis and my master's. So a degree in civil engineering covers a, a plethora of topics, which includes mechanics and materials, hydraulics, material sciences, and statistical analysis. So a little bit about, my, about myself, I, I finished five years here at Dow and I was involved in the co-op program and for 12 months, I was uh, working for a consulting firm in Burnside, and which entailed that I was pretty much uh, working in construction or in the construction field for the duration of my 12 months. Uh, and the beautiful thing about civil engineering is it's a lovely mix of office and the field. So if you love that hands-on experience or you love being a designer, this is the right discipline for you. Um, at Dalhousie, we have uh, four specific sub-disciplines within our civil engineering umbrella which includes structural, which I am uh, involved in, geotechnical, uh, water resources and environment, as uh, a fellow colleague mentioned previously, and transportation. So 
So there's a lot of diversity within the civil engineering program, a lot of different courses you can take as soon as you get into third and fourth year. So again, do not judge this, you know, the civil engineering discipline or any discipline based on your first year, as it has, for me personally, did have it had no, um, I mean, it didn't really affect my decision at all because the courses were not indicative of my discipline. So as soon as you start going to second year and third year, that's where you take those specific courses. And then specifically in my co-op, and my uh, fifth year is like, this is where I exactly want to do. So I, I wanted to do structural. So I did a heavy structural lo course load. And hence, I'm continuing in the structural engineering as in my master's. So I hope I was able to give you some insight uh, into civil engineering. Please shoot me an email, faraj.sharston at dal.ca if you have any questions um, regarding uh, civil engineering. So I'd like to hand it off now to uh, Hannah uh, to talk to you about mechanical engineering. Yeah, so I'm a mechanical engineering student in my about to go into my last year of classes. I'm a part of the co-op program as well. Uh, so I've done um, four years at Dalhousie now and I'm going to go into my last academic term after my current co-op. But like Faraj said, I study mechanical engineering uh, at Dal, uh, which is one of the disciplines. Um, so kind of the basics of mechanical engineering is that we apply physics, math and material science to design, analyze, manufacture and maintain mechanical systems. Uh, it's a super old form of engineering, uh, like some of them are, uh, and it includes core areas like uh, mechanics, dynamics, thermodynamics, material science, uh, structural analysis, and even electricity. Uh, so actually, like Amir was saying at the beginning uh, about electrical, I was kind of the opposite. When I went into engineering, uh, I kind of saw myself in electrical. I really liked coding uh, and that kind of stuff, so I thought that that might make sense for me. But once I learned more about the disciplines, uh, mechanical really started to stand out to me. Uh, and every day I'm grateful that that's the choice that I made. Uh, one of my favorite things about mechanical uh, is all of the different things you can do with it. Um, you are able to combine so many different forms uh, of what you learn in school uh, and kind of apply it to uh, different concepts. Um, so my co-ops uh, have been at the Irving Oil Refinery working on rotating equipment, so like turbines and compressors, uh, which was a really great experience uh, in St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, and then I also got to work at Surrett Battery, a manufacturing plant in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia, uh, where I worked uh, with manufacturing uh, as well as some research and design as well, which was pretty cool. Uh, and then most recently, uh, my current co-op term uh, is with Carbon Cure Technologies here in Burnside, um, which is close to Halifax. Uh, this one, Carbon Cure is a company uh, that actually works primarily with cement, uh, so it's pretty cool to be a mechanical engineering a mechanical engineering student working with cement. Uh, it, it's kind of surprising uh, to some people, but the thing with mechanical engineering, right, we study things that move uh, essentially, right, and so you can think about uh, lots of different aspects of life, and even though maybe cement uh, makes you think of civil, uh, to make to inject the CO2 into cement, which is what we do at Carbon Cure, you need um, pumps. Uh, and valves and all sorts of stuff which uh, are mechanical concepts kind of in nature and so you're able to work uh, all across uh, and so yeah Carbon Cure is a green tech company which I'm really excited about uh, and so it's been a really great opportunity uh, to work with a company that's doing things uh, on, on quite a huge scale. Uh, they were uh, ranked number the number one global or sorry the number one North American clean tech company this year uh, so it's really exciting to be able to work with them uh, and they hire all sorts of different students uh, so it's in mechanical and all the other disciplines that you get to work with students uh, I suppose engineers from all sorts of different disciplines uh, no matter what you choose um, but yeah so mechanical really stood out to me because I really like the way things move uh, I like in mechanical how we get to see what happens how we get to you know use equations use simulations uh, kind of make our predictions and then we get to apply them in the real world and watch it happen you get to watch uh, you know the car go at that speed now that you've updated uh, the differential or anything like that like you get to watch how every little change you make uh, can affect something on the bigger picture. Uh, and that's one of my favorite things about mechanical, how you can see exactly what you're doing and exactly uh, what you're affecting. But that's kind of what I have to say about mechanical. Karen, if you wanna come back in. Yeah, okay, thanks everyone. Uh, I think Maddie might have a couple of questions from the first years. Yeah, I have a couple of questions for you. So the first question is, what is your what was your favorite class throughout your degree in your discipline. I think we can just go in the same order again. 
Yeah. Um, okay, so I think it is a really hard question because from second year, third year, fourth year, um, you are exposed to so many classes in different industries, right? Whether you want to take a look into signal theory or if you want to take a look into coding and whatnot. Um, it's a very good question, but for me, I would definitely choose introduction to electronics. Um, we as a society, all you know, we always work with cell phones, we always work with laptops. And sometimes, you know, we never really question what goes inside, right? And the course really covers um, how, you know, you even charge your phone, right? So you have a large load of uh, electricity going into your house. So how is that converted into, you know, a small power enough to, you know, charge your phone? Um, and you really dive deep into those theoretical um you know, uh, ideas and whatnot. Um, the labs were absolutely amazing. Uh, you get to create your own little charger. So like a small block, you kind of get to design it and, you know, uh, turn 120 volts down to five volts enough to, you know, charge your phone or a small device. Um, and I think it's very important. Uh, and this applies to every single discipline. Um, if you understand the fundamentals and the foundations of the discipline that you're in, you can start to build up and go on from there and just spread and you know go into specific industries and whatnot. So I think that course, in my opinion, was my favorite and one of the best courses to take uh, while you take uh, electrical engineering or even computer engineering because that course is shared in both uh, streams. So yeah, introduction to electronics, absolutely. That's my favorite course. <laughs> and I will give it to Tala. All right. So just like Mira said, like throughout the years, you're every single time you're going to be like, oh, I like this one the most. So you're going to keep learning new things. And every time you learn something new, you're going to be so into it that you're going to say, OK, this is my favorite one. But then in industrial engineering, they gave us the opportunity to do a mini senior project. And instead of the eight months that we have, we do it in four months. And I think that's my favorite uh, course. And it's called industrial engineering design. And the reason why I like it is because it takes us to the real, real world. So we had the ability to go to a client and talk to them, um, say, like, ask them what their concerns were, what they were looking for to make more efficient, what are their, what other areas should we be looking into? And we just took it as a team and we started thinking about it, thinking of any requirements, the scope, how are we going to do this? And we just put all our thought into it and, like I said, every single time you like a new course, and this was this enabled us to put all our thought into it. So all the courses that we've learned, all the coding, all the application, production, everything was in this course because each team does the project in a different way. So it was more of an opportunity for us to see what we like the most and what we want to apply to this, and how do we want to how do we want to like handle this project and how do we how do we come up with the ways to fix this problem so i think that was my favorite course because it just gave me the diversity to apply everything that i've learned into one spot so i'll hand it over to annie thank you again um so i would say my favorite course that i took uh this year even though I have one more year left, uh, would be water quality. <laughs> um, it was a really great course. I believe it was actually under the civil department, but I would say it dealt more with environmental aspects rather than more civil aspects. Um, part of the reason why it was so great is the prof and the TA, they were almost like friends to us. They, nothing was too strenuous and they just kind of took an interest in it and us, asked us how our days were, and that just made the course 10 times easier. Um, the other reason why I also loved it was it was just really interesting to see like how water and wastewater is treated and how um, contaminants are transported through water systems. So we analyzed a lot of, um, we did a lot of problems where we had to look at how a Tra uh, tracer, which would be like a dye in the water, was transported um, through the system. And that was really interesting to me. As well, another aspect of it that was great was that we analyzed the dissolved oxygen uh, content in uh, these like systems, and which was really great in the sense of uh, environmental aspect because 
oxygen in water is critical for fish, right? So it was just something that I know I'll be, apply going forward in environmental risk assessments and anything else I do. So that's it for me. On to Devin. Um, my favorite class that I took was actually in second year is the introduction to process engineering. Um, I really enjoyed that class. Um, I think it really is the foundation for everything that you learn in chemical engineering with the process and doing your mass balances and um, seeing where your material ends up in your process. So I really enjoyed that as a good introduction to chemical engineering. And that's actually why I ended up choosing um, finally choosing chemical was that course. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the prof and uh, I thought it was explained really well and it just really um, spiked my interest in chemical engineering uh, with all the energy and mass balances around those units. And I'll pass that on to Raj. All right, thank you. Um, I think I'm very biased towards like the structural courses. So I feel it's really difficult to pinpoint one specific course. I wanna actually mention three courses because I feel they're very interrelated to each other. The first one is actually reinforced concrete design. I'm a huge concrete fan, and I'm, a pre I'm the president of the American Concrete Institute at Dow. Um, to <laughs> so even like I'm, I'm for whether it's our highways, our buildings, any structure, I am for our bridges. I am definitely for using reinforced concrete. Um, you know, regardless of what reinforcements we use. Uh, my second favorite course, which ties into reinforced concrete, is finite element method in structural engineering. Um, we dealt really into the the basics of finite element theory and went into forensic engineering, which I love, you know, analysis of, you know, after post disasters, what happened and how can we mitigate these issues? So we really went into forensic engineering with our finite element course. And then finally, special topics and structural systems, which really goes into the, um, the interaction between composite structures, which so steel and concrete together. So regarding our, so we went over a lot of bridge girders, a lot of our of different structures that have different composite structures because usually a lot of structures are not just one specific material they're a combination of timber concrete masonry and steel so i feel those three you know those three courses you know formed this epitome of this lovely one you know one just you know they're just amazing those three courses really um were my favorite and i can't really discriminate against each one so those those three have to be my favorite and I'll hand it off to, uh, to Hannah. Yeah, so my favorite classes uh, that I've taken so far, um, I know a highlight would definitely be the machine design courses that I've taken. Uh, design is obviously, obviously something that a lot of engineers do enjoy. Uh, and so it's pretty cool to see uh, how this information that you learn in your other classes that are, are very academic focused, uh, it's really cool to see kind of how they work in like the real world. Uh, and design courses give you that opportunity. Uh, and that's what I really enjoy about the machine design courses uh, in mechanical. Uh, and you get to learn about cool things um, that you see all around you, right? Like you get to see, you get to ask questions like, why do we make cars out of this material? Like, why do we use this uh, in airplanes? You get to look at kind of um, events that have happened and that you maybe have heard about in the news and you get to look at it through a lens of like, why did that happen? Do we like, can we explain it with mechanical reasoning? Uh, and you also get to learn about things uh, like bolts and gears and chains and pulleys and these things that seem uh, so like tiny and like you don't even think about it that often, um, but they, you, they are so prevalent in your day-to-day -day life. And when you take courses like this, you get to see um, just how much uh, of what you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis is thanks to engineers uh, in the past uh, and you know in machine design specifically mechanical but obviously you can see the impacts of all sorts of different engineers uh, and so it's really interesting uh, for me to see that to be able to combine that academic knowledge and you also get to do uh, cool labs in one of the machine design courses uh, we got a lego kit and we built Legos for our labs, right? Um, to see, and you get to build these cool things and you see how they work and how the movements translate into real life and how you can use them uh, on design applications. I know for, like for these machine design courses, you, when you go to write the exam, uh, sometimes I know, you know, the exam, they just take a picture of an object that you see all the time and they say, what's inside? Like what's inside this? And then your exam is to kind of figure out what is inside it. And it's very cool um, to kind of learn 
what is happening on all these things you interact with on a day-to-day -day life. I know Dr. Hubbard, one of the design profs, uh, likes to talk about how he gives us x-ray vision, um, but it's kind of a cool way to see it, right? Like you get to kind of learn what's inside all of these things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So machine design, the machine design courses I've taken definitely have been uh, very impactful on me. All right, so my next question is, what was the biggest help to you in the program? So was it like joining a society, a good group of friends, stuff like that? I guess we could maybe go in the same order again. Yeah, um, well, I, mean, I think, um, again, this can also be answered uh, with all the other disciplines as well. Um, I think what really makes engineering as a whole stand out is teamwork. Um, and, you know, whether it's understanding material after like post classes or trying to come up with ways on, uh, you know, solving, let's say, lab problems, right? I think having a good study group, right, uh, will really help you a lot um, throughout, you know, the higher years, second, third, and fourth year. Um, so I think that is one of the key components in uh, making sure that, uh, you know, you have peers that are supporting you uh, and, you know, having a good morale and just being enthusiastic. Um, but another thing, and I wish I was a little more aware of this when I was in my first year, and then I started to be more active within second and third and fourth year, is join a society. Uh, join this society that is uh, related to your own discipline, right? Uh, so I think I'm, I will be running for the president of Electrical and Computer Engineering Society. And um, I was actually the VP social uh, this past year. And I just wish I was there from the get-go, but no one really was there to tell me to be active and whatnot. Um, I think leaving a mark, right, um, with your department and just making sure that everyone has good morale and always you know supporting your peers by making sure um you know there's events and whatnot and that's something i really enjoy myself uh so yeah so i think the two things that are really really important is making sure you have an established group of friends and peers that you can um always you know go to to tackle problems and understand theories as well as being active on uh you know in societies whether it's you know uh specifically to your discipline or even something uh, that is you know related to engineering but not specifically to your discipline right um so those are the two things i definitely recommend and now i will give it off to talent thank you so i do agree peers and being active with our societies is a great help to be in every discipline but also take your profs as peers as well, because they're the biggest support that you can get in this situation because they can really approach you in a way that they wanna help you. And that's something that I felt was very amazing from my department is that whenever you need them, they're always there. I know for my hardest subject, I used to go every single day at 8.30, same professor, just ask questions and he'd be fine with it. And I think that's what made me do great with this course. So. I, I would say be open to your department, peers, and also being active with this, like social events and everything that's there. I know I wasn't active in the beginning, but then I joined one of the conferences with the industrial engineering team. And then I was like, this is amazing. I want to help do this next year. So I just ran for VP external. And I think it's a way for you to be motivated to enjoy your time while you're doing your discipline. So. I'll move it on to Annie. Uh, thanks again. Um, so I 100% agree with Amir and Tala, and I probably won't go over those things again because I explained them very well. Um, I just wanted to add on that for me, the biggest help was um, probably this past year, like I said, I got an experience at a consulting firm, and that probably benefited me so much with the marks I got this year. Um, at that consulting firm, I did a couple jobs where I had to go out and mark a road, and it really helped me this year when I was taking courses like surveying, which a lot of people didn't really understand the concepts as well as me because I had already had experience doing a lot of those things and getting that experience. So. Yeah, I would say that's one of the biggest things. And if you can get that experience as soon as you can, especially after your first year, after second year, that's the best way to go. And on to Devin. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would agree with everything that's been said so far. I don't think I would have gotten this far without the help from my peers, um, using your professors as um, 
really using them for what they are and they're there to help you. Um, the co-op experience for sure, like that definitely helps a lot. Um, I also will add that figuring out how you best study and handle stress is something that I could have used in first and second year. I didn't really get the hang of that until later on. But if you really figure out where you study best, how you study best, um, and then also how to manage your stress the best. I know some people who, when they're really stressed, they need to just sit down and do a ton of work, whereas I need to remove myself from the situation. And if I had learned that a little bit earlier, it might have helped me and uh, got, made me more productive when I am stressed. So figuring out really what works for you when you are um, overwhelmed or tired or stressed um, and how to study effectively definitely is something that uh, helped me through the degree. And I'll pass that on to Fresh. Um, I think, well, that's a tough one. I mean, I've got to say, uh, <laughs> honestly, it's pretty much, I mean, it's that sense of community that we have within our discipline. So coming to third year, a lot of associate universities come in. So you will see a lot of new faces. And I think moving forward with that, it's trying to go out of your, you know, your own little bubble and actually being able to interact with a lot of people. Because as engineers, our, our job is not only just to design, but also to communicate effectively with other people. So I think that sense of community that we have within our with my within my discipline was wonderful uh, and really helped in, you know, as a, another colleague mentioned, as you know, to manage stress or to reduce load or to ask questions. But a major thing as well is always, you know, get involved in extracurriculars. So in terms of extracurriculars, it does require a lot of time. It is time uh, sensitive. So you have to figure out that balance between you know, your course, your academic course load and extracurriculars, but with extracurriculars, you're fine tuning those skills, you know, those soft skills, those hard skills, and being able to gain, you know, a different, like a, a new skill set that you would need for your, you know, that can reinforce your academic courses. Um, and with that, you're also able to gain new connections. So like with my involvement in student government, like within the civil engineering society and different societies within the civil program, most of, if not all of the civil professors are my best friends. Like we're on a, as uh, Annie mentioned, on a first name basis, I call them and whatnot. Some, of course, more comfortable than others, but generally, you know, it's building those connections because as engineers, we need to build connections. And with more connections, we're able to have more support and more help. So I hope that um, answers that question. And I'll hand it off to uh, Hannah. Yeah, so like uh, a lot of the other people said, um, obviously community is really important in engineering. I think it's important in most things. Um, but I think in engineering where we're all taking, uh, especially within a discipline, we're all taking uh, summer classes and a cohort. Uh, there's definitely a, a very strong sense of community. I know like having that close uh, peer support system uh, is helpful to talk about stress uh, and different kind of situations you're in, as well as like work on academic problems. Uh, but I know in mechanical, and I'm sure this is uh, true for other disciplines, even though mechanical is one of the biggest disciplines, um, I still recognize everybody in my classes. And, and like last term, uh, we had heat transfer assignments were due, uh, you know, Friday at midnight, uh, and you could see in the design commons, you know, I could see all of the mechanical engineering students there, and we're all working on the, uh, on, on similar assignments, right, and so even if I didn't, uh, even if someone wasn't, I would maybe didn't consider a close friend, maybe I didn't know them super well, uh, I know there's a, a strong sense of community within mechanical, uh, and I'm sure the other disciplines as well, so there's no, no doubts about going up and being like, hey, like, I am not getting question 17. Like, have you had any luck with it? Uh, and then most of the time they say, oh, my God, yes, of course, this is kind of what I did. And they say, actually, did you do question 19? Because I'm not quite sure about that one. Uh, and you get to kind of work like that, even with people who aren't necessarily your close friends. Uh, and then even uh, like within mechanical in my co in my year, uh, you know, the, the women in mechanical, there's not a lot of us uh, necessarily, um, but we have like a Facebook group uh, chat and uh, we go have wine at someone's apartment every now and then. Uh, and so it's really nice uh, to have a support system, especially, uh, you know, engineering. Uh, there are, uh, you know, representation in engineering uh, of different uh, people is not always equal. And so to be able to have that support system, uh, to have uh, all of the all the girls in mech, uh, kind of be able to talk to each other uh, can be really helpful. Uh, and I also think it's important to be involved in your uh, community, to be involved in engineering uh, and the societies at DAL. Uh, but I'm also, I'm on a soccer team uh, with no other engineering students. Uh, and it's nice sometimes to be able to kind of get out of that, get out of your head, get out of engineering for a little bit. Uh, as much as we all love it and hate it sometimes, uh, it can be good to step away from it. Uh, and so being, uh, having that soccer team, being able to kind of go and focus on something else uh, for an hour, even during really busy 
busy times and ex sometimes especially during really busy times uh, I found really helpful I kind of avoided I always played soccer in the summer uh, and I avoided doing it in the winter because I was like oh, I'm too busy I don't have time but this past winter I did it and it was huge for me to be able to take that hour you know once a week and just not think about engineering uh, I was also involved in iGEM uh, which is like a genetic engineering research project um, that's actually kind of mostly focused in micro and immuno biology uh, and so I was able to be a part of that a focus on academics uh, but I was the only engineering student there so it was nice to be able to kind of see people because in engineering especially on Sexton where we're so many engineering students uh, we see engineering students all the time and so to be able to work with people uh, from the biology department the chemistry department or faculties uh, microbio all of that kind of stuff was really interesting uh, and kind of eye-opening and it kind of gets you out of that uh, headspace sometimes but of course yeah being involved in engineering societies as well has been really great uh, I've kind of been involved in different ones throughout uh, and ones that are related to your disciplines ones that are related to your academics uh, like you know um, can be really helpful and then there's also of course like morale and social uh, groups as well on campus that can be really helpful. Uh, so just be involved in as many different ways as you find helpful. It's important to look in on yourself too, because for some people, uh, you know, well, when they feel busy and overwhelmed, sometimes having a, a sport or having like a social society can be really helpful to get their head out. And some people just want to be able to focus uh, and have complete control over their time. So it's important to uh, kind of look at yourself and what works best for you but for me being involved as, as involved as I can kind of across as many different facets uh, has been what I find works the best for me. That's great Hannah thanks a lot thanks everyone um, so I just wanted to say a little bit about what I do so my job is called student engagement um, but my real job is student retention so my job is to keep engineering students in school and the way I do that is through student engagement so the way I know all this crew is not because they're student presidents of their societies. I know Amir because he's my go-to hype man. If I need somebody to to pump up a group or get everybody excited, then I can call an Amir. Um, if I need advice on um, on something about students, I can't think like a student. I don't know what it's like to be an engineering student. Um, I, I'll often check in with Tala and um, weigh things with her and see what she thinks. Uh, I know Annie from doing lots of tours. I've asked people through a volunteer group, um, can you help out with the tour? Annie's stepped up many times to help out with that, with high school students coming, wanting to know more about engineering. I know Devin from doing some outreach work, lots of outreach work over many years. Uh, I think probably almost all of her years there, she's uh, helped out with little kids who are interested in engineering or want to know more about that, working on projects um, with the kids. Uh, Faraj is my doorstop man. I have a huge concrete doorstop in my office. If you ever come to my office, uh, Faraj left a lot of concrete at an event one time. <laughs> and yeah. I can always I can always <laughs> call on him when I need uh, volunteers for anything like that. And Hannah, I've known since she started um, volunteering with Student Affairs Committee, right up to helping out with gearheads. Um, this is just a really good um, cross section of students who have helped out throughout their careers. Now, um, Maddie has only been with us for two years, but she's already done almost as much work as all these guys put together. She's been an, an amazing uh, VP academics uh, for DES this past year, and I couldn't have done anything that I did this year without Maddie. So um, I really appreciate all that you've done, and I wanted to uh, reinforce that if you need to, if you're looking for uh, for ways to help out or get more involved in engineering, then you can contact me and I can help connect you with people like these people, or you can become one of these people because um, the way that they became who they are is by just doing it. So um, if you have any questions at all, the email is engineering at dal.ca. I can help connect you with these guys or with other societies um, to get more information. But engineering at dal.ca is the kind of catch all. If you put um, discipline choice or something like that in the subject line, then that can help direct it more quickly to me. Um, thank you for your time and thank all you guys for volunteering for this. I really appreciate it and I think it'll make a big difference. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.